Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the Ask Ally a podcast and a live stream about self publishing poetry. I'm here with Trish Hopkinson again. Hi, Trish. Hello, happy to be here. Great to have you as always. And this evening, Trish and I are going to be talking about all the different ways that poets can um, monetize, uh, to use that, that term that some of us um, don't like very much, but is, is kind of handy to describe um, our poetry. So um, obviously selling our poetry books is what we're all about as publishers. Um, we are publishers of our own work and that is our primary job is to sell books but also publishing a book opens lots of other doors and lots of other opportunities for poets. And so that's what we're going to be talking about this evening. Um, but before we get to that, we always talk a little bit about what we're doing ourselves. And I know that Trish has been um, adding to her wonderful website, trishhopkinson.com. She's been adding um, a self-publishing section. So yeah, how's that been going? It's going great. It was really fun. I mean, it was something that I dabbled in a little bit before, but hadn't focused on much. And then when I started working with Orna and the the Ask Ally uh, podcast, I thought, well, this is an opportunity that I, where I could pull some information together in a more organized way for poets to kind of access and get ideas around, you know, self-publishing their work. And what I really discovered about it that I think too many folks see it as either you self-publish or you traditionally publish, when really there's no reason why you can't do both. And there, there are purposes potentially for both, uh, different ways of self-promoting yourself, whether it's uh, with a traditional publisher or, you know, with your own work, you know, like on Instagram, or if you uh, self-publish your own books to sell at readings and events and things like that broadsides. I mean, there's all kinds of fun things that you can potentially do for your poetry to share with your readers and followers. So really, um, the idea behind this page is to say that you can do all of those things and potentially all of those things can help promote your voice and add to your community. So really building your poetry network. So now on my website, if you go to uh, poetry writing resources at the top menu, there is a separate page for self-publishing poetry tips. And it also works for promotion with traditional publishing as well. So it's really for everyone, but there are uh, there is a huge list of um, different articles and tips and all kinds of links to tools and resources and other things to really get you started. And if you even if you've been doing it for a long time, like Orta and I both have been looking through these articles and and there there are new things for everybody, even if you're a seasoned pro. Um, there are great ideas and suggestions and uh, more creative ways of really sharing your work. So it's yeah. um, it was a lot of fun to research and I'm I'm really excited about it and and I hope uh, folks will check it out and leave messages and notes of other resources that they might have or things that they're using that that are helpful that we can just continue to kind of build this list up. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I expected to recognize most of what was there. And I have to say about half of, of the stuff that was there was new to me. And, you know, I'm constantly looking for resources. And you're, you are the queen of resources, poetry wise, really. You are, I don't know where you find the stuff. You really, your website is a trove. And I think what you said there is so important. And it's the reason that you and I work together on this podcast is uh, more than any other genre, I think there is a huge crossover in poetry between, um, you know, tr trade published, traditionally published and, and self-publishing. It's almost impossible to draw the line, I think. Um, in poetry, in it's 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 growing more shadowy everywhere. But um, in poetry, it was never really there. I think because the, a lot of the indie presses are are you know really are kind of micro micro publishers, just mm -hmm. like just like self publishers. And um, yeah, it's it's okay. They're publishing. They're not publishing their own work, but that's the only difference. They're using the same tools. 
and they're reaching their followers and stuff in the same way so um yeah i do encourage everybody to check out check out the resources and if you're looking for a resource that isn't there and um, both um we at ally and i know trish would be really interested in hearing you know what you need as self-publishing poets what do you need to to know more about and um yeah and also to say that we will be i know you've quite a few resources about instagram on your page and that later on after this session we will be running our indie poetry please um mm -hmm. session over on instagram live if any of you are around for that Okay, so let's talk a little bit then about making money from poetry and um, how one does that. So at the Alliance, we've put together kind of business models, money models for authors um, of various kinds. And the first two of those models are selling books and um, we divide them in two. One is selling on one platform only in one format. So generally eBooks on Amazon would be the typical um, of that model and also selling wide in multiple formats. So lots of platforms, you know, basically getting the books out as widely as possible to, on as many platforms as possible. They're kind of the, the two book sales models. Um, Trish, you've worked with a few people on, on uh, publishing your books, uh, third party publishers. Can you talk to that a little bit in terms of book sales and how you promote your work and how you get it out there? Yeah, actually, I mean, the first um, the first chapbook that I ever did, I actually worked on, I had my children do the artwork and they're both artists. So um, it, it was just my very first stab at a collection. And I, I literally just had that chapbook printed. I had a hundred copies done. I had the, the uh, covers done separately in color and um, had them saddles, stapled for me uh, basically just did it at the local copy shop but those were you know really inexpensive uh, to produce uh, they just cost me a few dollars a piece and so i was able to take those to readings and just sell them for five dollars and just have something you know handy that had my work in it people who were interested who had been supporting me um, so they went to, you know, audience members at open mics or they went to uh, friends and family, of course. Um, and I think that's a great model, honestly. So, you know, I just wanted to mention that outside, you know, if you do, if you're just getting your feet wet, right, there's no reason why you can't do very simple chapbooks that you can sell for like $5 or, as you mentioned, electronically, you can do similar things where those folks that see you perform or read your poetry online or what have you can get some more, right? And can and can feel like they're supporting your work at, you know, a nominal fee just to kind of get those followers in and give them, you know, something in return. So so I wanted to mention that, but, but yes, in working with uh, poetry publishers, uh, the other two books that I have out, um, well, there's another, but anyway, the other two that matter, um, <laughs> Um, one was uh, print and one is online and is free. So I have uh, the, my chat book uh, footnote that came out in 2017 through Lithic Press. It was printed uh, by a traditional press. So I submitted work to them. They accepted it. Uh, and um, they gave me a few copies. You know, I think they originally gave me 25 copies to sell on my own. So those were completely my responsibility. And then any profit from those were mine, of was mine as well. Um, so, and then I could buy them from them uh, at cost of basically 50% um, to sell. And I think I, I think I've bought a couple more uh, sets of 25 or so from them. I think I've sold about a hundred of those on my own, um, just through my blog and website and sharing on Facebook and going to readings. And um, so that certainly was a, a good way for me to sell books myself. But then they, of course, sell them on their website. Um, and so uh, they've sold several. They sold some at AWP. They had a table up there, which was really fun because I got to do signings uh, at AWP at their table, which was a fun way to promote the book. So other than that, you know, getting reviews is really great. If you have a community of poets and writers around you, then you can get poetry reviews uh, written about your books, and that helps promote it. 
and a lot of different literary magazines are always looking for book reviews to publish in their in their issues. So that's another great resource. And there are a couple of sites too that really focus on that. Um, Poetry Cafe focuses specifically on chapbook reviews, which is really cool. Um, Riza Dittenberg uh, runs that site. She does an exceptional job. And then there's also a site called The Bind that does uh, poetry, publishes poetry book reviews specifically. But many lit mags do have those. And some will take, you know, some won't care if they're self-published or traditionally published. They're just looking for those, those book reviews. So that's something to consider. Um, I did something fun last year uh, with a fellow poet. Uh, her name is Dana Patterson. And we both had chat books come out. Uh, in the last year or so, um, my electronic, my e chat book that is free to read online. And she had a chat book come out with Pork Belly Press. We were chatting about it and just thought it might be cool to exchange reviews. So I reviewed hers and she reviewed mine. And then we actually had those uh, published with full disclosure saying we did a review swap. And um, there was a, a literary magazine that, that published both reviews uh, called Tinderbox. So really okay. great, really great experience uh, for everybody. Really fun to cross promote and help each other, um, you know, to add, add fellow followers to each other's networks. Um, so that was, that was really a great experience. So oh, definitely fun. encourage reviews, interviews, all of that stuff that you can do to, you know, talk about your book. Um, what you put into it, what you're getting out of it, encouraging other writers, that type of giving back to the community will help you sell books. I promise. Yeah, definitely. And and again, poetry more than any other genre, I think readers and writers are almost the same thing. We are our own ecosystem and, and that, that sort of what goes around comes around kind of thing is is even more prevalent in, in poetry publishing than than elsewhere. While we're on the topic of that chat book, um, could you please tell people the name of it and where they can oh. actually get it? <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I guess... every, everybody else's, the name of everybody else's book and forgets to mention her own. <laughs> yes, no, thank you so much for reminding me. I'm Sometimes I do, I get a little carried away and excited about um, giving suggestions. Uh, but yes, it's called Almost Famous. And it uh, was published by Yavanika Press in 2019, toward the end of 2019. So it was basically a 2020 book. But um, yeah, that's downloadable on their site uh, for no cost. And of course, you can find it on my site too, under my poetry. You can find links to, to all of my publications that are available online and, and to books that are available to purchase. So. Fantastic. And, and just circling back to what you said about, you know, your first book being a chat book and, and you know, putting it together yourself. Mine, my first um, ever self-published book, too, was a chat book because uh, it was my, but it was electronically uh, done. It was an e-book and it was my, me dipping my toe into the e-book waters and into the self-publishing waters for the very first time. And um, I still bring out every every 10 poems. I just put them together into a into an e-book and put a cover. The cover is the same, just in different colours each time. So it doesn't cost me any money to make a change on that. And why not? You know, it keeps people up to date. Those who are interested, it keeps people up to date with what you're doing. It allows people to just have a little taster if they don't want to commit to buying a, a full collection or, or, or a selected, um, um, you know, a larger book. Essentially, they can just have, have a little taster and 10 poems at a time, I think, is the perfect amount to give you a sense of a poet. Uh, while you know having a bit of variety and and um so i think chapbooks are just fantastic and you can't i can't say enough for them really as tools to open all sorts of doors so let's talk a little bit then about some of the other things that happen when you do publish a, a chapbook or a a um a larger book there are other ways that you can kind of benefit from that, aren't there? Besides the obvious thing of, of selling the books. So yeah, talk to us a little bit about that. I think, I think certainly just being part of the community and building that network is, is especially key. So you can build some other greater relationships 
with literary magazines and other publications as far as, you know, we talked a little bit about getting book reviews done, but also there are opportunities for author interviews, you know, to talk about your process. You can write guest blog posts. You can do other things that will promote you, but also introduce you to other folks that will, you know, pay it forward, pay it back to you. Um, so, I mean, I have, I can't speak enough about, you know, my interaction uh, with all the editor interviews that I do for my website, um, just really getting to know people in the community. Then uh, things like Orna Ross says, hey, Trish, do you want to be on a podcast? And you're like, yes, I would love to do that. <laughs> um, you know, those types of opportunities don't present themselves unless you really become, you know, unless you're participating in the community and unless you're really consistent with it. So, you know, getting a book out there, having something so that um, folks can interact with you, uh, get a signed copy, have, you know, something of yours to keep because they want to support you um, because they enjoy your work. That's one aspect of it, but also just really consistently, you know, growing that network and making sure that people remember you're there, you know, be consistent with your social media posts. Um, I think all of those things really, what they do is they show that you're ready for the opportunities, right? And then those opportunities will start to come to you. So from my perspective, you know, the only way to, to make money uh, with poetry or any writing is to get the word out and to be consistent and to, you know, show that you were the reason why you're a poet or writer is to be part of this greater community and to be an artist, to be a literary artist. That's really, you know, the most important aspect. Of course, we all need to get paid. That's a real true thing. Um, but, you know, contributing back to the community and to literary arts in general is how you really make, <clears throat> excuse me, that's how you make progress and continue to show up so that those opportunities will keep coming back to you. And the creative and the commercial um, are, are so intertwined. You know, we, we have this habit of kind of breaking them out as if they're two, two different things. But actually, certainly, you know, on the far side of publication, those two things become um, very entwined. And the more we can integrate them, the, the as you say, the better we do, the more, pro the more progress we, we make. So some of the kinds of opportunities that poets are, are getting, uh, lots of stuff around performance and teaching. And, and with, with the pandemic, of course, a lot of this has moved online, which has been a very good thing for um, those who are published in, in ebook and audiobook form. Um, these uh, sometimes a poet will make more um, money and reach larger audiences in their performances and and indeed maybe teaching as well, which is also something that's moving online a lot. Um, yeah, for for the people who are you know the slam poets and and the performance poets generally, um, having a book and the way in which those two kind of work together can be really productive too, right? Yes, absolutely. And I've you know I think regardless of whether you know you're known as a performance poet or a, a page poet, um, you know, you can you can certainly have audio recordings available and you can certainly have, you know, a Patreon. We talked about that a little bit before the show where you can offer, you know, extras to your followers who subscribe to you on a regular basis. And Patreon can be great because, you know, people don't mind committing uh, a few dollars a month. Um, I have a lot of those um, <laughs> because there are a lot of folks that I want to support and, you know, maybe I already have their book and I still want to support them. Uh, so, you know, being able to contribute or donate toward an artist, um, whether they're a performance poet or, um, you know, more of a, a page poet. I hate that distinction, but yeah, regardless, anyway, um, <laughs> if they're a poet of any type, <laughs> um, I think that's that's a great way to garner additional support and also, you know, keep your followers updated on what you're doing and be able to offer them, you know, little tidbits that maybe aren't open to the general public. Um, there was something else I was going to say too about, 
you mentioned um I'll talk a little bit about my Patreon while you have a think. Yeah, um, because I'm, go ahead. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I had I'm another on, point. I'm on Patreon and and like you support lots of people there. I I love it um, in, as a you know as a supporter um, as a patron because you keep in touch with the evolution of the of the the person's work and you could you know you're in touch in it in a completely different way than receiving the finished book product you know it's 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 a, a really live and ongoing thing and i really enjoy it and as a creator i love it because well, first of all, I have to produce an exclusive poem. So I, I do a stream, you know, a reader stream. I have a um, patron uh, for poetry at three different levels. So print, book patron, ebook patron, and just reader stream. And, and that's one exclusive poem um, a month that goes to readers um, and is exclusively just for patrons for three months. So for three months, nobody else has read it. It's hot off the creative presses. It's kind of the poem that that month um, I've worked hardest at and it means most to me. And um, I, I really love the fact that people are waiting uh, to receive it and uh, it makes me more productive. Uh, it's one of the reasons yes. that, um, uh, yeah, it keeps me, you know, accountable. I have to do at least one kind of reasonably sized poem a month. And um, so, yeah, it serves all, all sorts of functions. And then there is, you know, you get this feedback and a much more personal level of connection with your readers and, you know, they really take... Um, yeah they take take an interest and and uh, you get a different level of engagement i think just a few dollars makes a difference even though it's not a huge commitment it is it's not just about the money it's also about the attention that that kind of brings with it and and that's the hardest thing to get i think in our in our noisy world at the moment we've all these wonderful tools for putting our work out there but it can be hard to actually get attention and um patreon's great for bringing in close to you the people who really get it and really care about what you're doing so um yeah i love it and i really would encourage anybody to to get involved because it forces you to think about what is your value to the reader you know what are you actually offering and and why should they be interested and all that kind of thing and it adds to that consistency i've been talking about right because if you have a system and you think about what can i really commit to long term if you're going to offer it to someone who's paying something you know, contributing to it in some way, then you really do, you know, that consistency is super important. So when you do start something like that, make sure that it's something you can stick with because you don't want to disappoint your followers. Um, while a lot of them are going to be very understanding, you know, if, oh, I had to skip a month, I was on holiday or I was, you know, this, ha this happened, life happens. Everyone knows that. And you have to be willing to be transparent about that, or you have to be willing to never miss your commitments. Um, and to be really consistent. So I, I love everything that, that you just said around that. Um, I did remember the other thought. I actually have would. two. That's I have great. two thoughts. <laughs> One that you mentioned was, you know, the creative and the commercial intertwining. And, and I love what you said about, you know, the patron and the consistency and how that drives you, right, to really uh, to apply craft and, and really work hard on your, your poetry and your work. And you're always looking to improve and to do something new and fresh, right, for your followers. So that certainly can be a great source of inspiration. Um, it can be a little bit of pressure, but like you said, you know, make sure you give yourself plenty of time. You know, what are you willing to commit to? Can you do something monthly? Do, do you need to do it quarterly? Do you just want to do one big thing yearly? What, what do you want to do? And work that into your plan and make sure that it fits, you know, sort of the value that you're trying to give those uh, Patreon supporters. Um, along those creative lines, we also talked about how poets make, you know, usually they, some of their best money comes from teaching, right? Um, from providing workshops or, or from performance. Sometimes, you know, we, you know, we do, there are paying uh, performances that, that are excellent, different poetry festivals and, and other performance opportunities. I certainly have been, paid to, you know, before I moved to Colorado uh, last month, um, there were a couple of different uh, humanities organizations out here who, 
you know, sponsored me, even gave me a travel stipend and, you know, uh, a paying performance fee, which was lovely to come out and read my poetry and then an opportunity to sell books. So performances are another way. And, but teaching classes, I think definitely that is where I, I by far make the most per hour teaching or in some cases, and I, I haven't done a lot of this, but I do know a lot of poetry friends who provide editing services or give feedback on uh, poems to help other poets uh, really work on their craft. And that's where I think, you know, poets can monetize their talents really the most, um, unless you are just like really into performance. But, you know, even those poets who, you know, some of the biggest slam poets that are just known nationally and internationally, um, they're still, I guarantee you, they're making the most uh, when they go on site and teach workshops or even virtually, you know, that's where they're, they're seeing the most money. So part of that is, you know, being ready for those opportunities, looking for those opportunities, applying for different programs when it makes sense, and really just putting yourself out there. And that's, that truly is the fastest way to make the most, um, I would say, over, you know, even, I mean, even if you do sell, like I said, I probably sold a hundred chapbooks the first year or so um, that Footnote came out, but what it, was I making like $12 a book, you know, I mean, it just, it, it, those little things add up if you're doing a lot of them over time, certainly. Um, but yeah, teaching and performing uh, pays the most for our time, I think. And you notice that those things are giving back the most as well, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's so true. And we are seeing now a, a huge movement of, of people who have been teaching offline, moving online through uh, platforms like Teachable and um, and masterclasses as well, it, you know, some courses, sometimes just cl individual classes and they're scalable and um, they can be run on a loop and you know when the um the student comes along it's the, their first time to to meet that course but that course could have been running for years and and you know you don't actually have to be physically present in the room now even to get paid and get paid well um for, right for teaching and um we're, we're seeing a lot of people doing a lot of our authors, not so much the poets, um, but a lot of, of our fiction authors and, and nonfiction, particularly, you know, the how to practical sort of stuff. And for the poets, there is that whole how to write poetry, how to publish poetry, how to teach poetry, you know. Um, how to edit, how to revise, you know, how do you find new topics? What prompts get you writing? I mean, there are so many really great topics and I'll share, there's one poet uh, just happens to be in Colorado. Her name is Marge Hahn, uh, M-A-R-J-H-A-H-N-E, mm -hmm. runs a terrific website. She teaches consistently and she just uses Zoom and puts together programs and offers, you know, so many seats and she offers editing services and things as well. And that's her, I think that's her bread and butter. I mean, she does a fantastic job. I would say she has, you know, some incredible ideas and, and certainly as poets who, you know, we're always working on our craft. I love going to her workshops. I mean, and it does give you a chance if you can attend because a lot of these are not super expensive. Some workshops are like $15, you know, for an hour or something, you know, some are more. You certainly can spend a lot um, with, you know, if you have someone who is particularly well known, but um, Marge's workshops are, are really well priced and there are a lot of different uh, platforms that offer well priced workshops. I've met some of my best friends in the industry, you know, through these workshops and met other editors and found other opportunities. So it's another chance for you to be in the community working on that craft, blending the commercial and the creative, like you said. I love that, by the way, that I think that's a really good way for everybody to look at it that everything that you do to, you know, really work on your craft and build your network, it all sort of, you know, it's all intertwined and, and one, you know, influences and helps uh, and promotes the other. Great. And we have a request for you to say that poet's name oh. again. Oh, Marge Han, M-A-R-J-H-A-H-N-E. There you go, Wendy. Hopefully that you got it that and time. She, yeah, she has... 
Oh, I'm sorry. She's done some guest blogs um, on my website too. So you can search for her there if you can't find her on the internet, but you should be able to find her. Yeah. Fantastic. And um, everybody that we've referred to will be in the transcript on the podcast post on uh, selfpublishingadvice.org on Friday. That's when our podcast comes out and it, there is always a transcript and show notes with links to. So there'll be links to Trish's um website and Marge's and anybody else that we have we have mentioned we are all but out of time so hopefully that session gave you some ideas um, to think about ways in which you can uh, you know, expand on um, selling books, uh, of course, selling more books as well with the the tips that you got from Trish up at the top of top of the show, but also thinking about ways of, as we said, it's, it's the theme of the show today, integrating <laughs> the creative and the commercial in a way that it creates a sort of a rounded, blended um, uh, business really and uh, that won't feel like a business because it is so creative but but actually right. that's that's what it is so yeah we are now heading over to instagram where we um are going to be reading uh, hashtag indie poetry please is is a hashtag that we run on instagram where we invite emerging poets to submit their work and um, every second day I post um, this work on my account and then we choose uh, some of the poems uh, to feature them with a reading so we're going across now to do the reading if you want to um, join us you'd be very welcome that's at Orner Ross Poetry and uh, we'll be back next month with more poetry tips and until then a uh, happy writing and happy publishing. Bye-bye now.